Hello everyone, uh, this is Guilherme, CEO from Toradex Brazil Office. We are starting to broadcast our webinar about Windows Embedded Compact on Toradex computer on models. Uh, the aim of this webinar today is show you uh, how you can easily develop embedded applications using Windows Embedded Compact operating system together with Toradex products and uh, a basic, basic overview of how Toradex uh, treats the various aspects of development uh, using Windows Embedded Compact. Uh, today I want to cover four basic topics here. Uh, first I will do a small introduction about Toradex. Uh, especially for those who don't know our company and products. After that, I will talk about Windows Embedded Compact and the images and BSPs that Toradex provides for customers to develop applications using our hardware. After that, I will show you uh, the libraries that Toradex also provides uh, which you can use to access peripheral hardware like GPIO, I2C, PWM, SPI interfaces. Uh, actually, you can do this just by using our DLLs uh, directly on your application. And in the final part of this webinar, I will show to you some tools that Toradex provides uh, which can uh, speed up your development type, time uh, by uh, helping you to test some prototypes or evaluate how much memory and power from the CPU your application is consuming, uh, among other uh, possibilities. Uh, so, starting the introduction about Toradex, we are a Swiss company and today we have several offices around the world. We have offices in USA, in Brazil, where I'm speaking to you from, in Switzerland, India, China, Vietnam and also Japan. What is special about Toradex is that we have direct direct sales uh, in, in our uh, sales offices around the world. This means that you will not buy our hardware from distributors, but you will call to one of our offices, talk to our engineers, discuss your application, and uh, finally purchase uh, your hardware. Uh, this also means that we have local stock in each office uh, to serve you better and also uh, this helps you to avoid all the possible importation issues and other uh, difficulties you can have. And uh, the third uh, topic uh, which I consider very interesting in Toradex is that we have uh, local and free premium support. So at any time you can write an email to us and our field application engineers will be happy uh, to help you on your development, uh, sometimes with some guidance, others solving any issues that you might find during the development. Uh, so what Toradex do? Uh, Toradex do computer on models. Uh, all our products today are based on ARM architecture and for those who not know, uh, a computer on model it's an a, a electronic board with a connector. Uh, I, I assume you can see my mouse, so this is the connector and the electronic board and this board is composed by memory, uh, RAM and flash, a CPU, um, in our case it's our, always an uh, ARM processor and you also have displays, touch controllers, audio codecs 
uh, Ethernet, uh, SPI, I2C interfaces, and others. And we also provide this board with software or with operating system to you. So we have the whole Linux ecosystem if you want, or you can also use Windows Embedded Compact ecosystem, which is the subject of our webinar today. Uh, we are deployed in almost every vertical market in the world today. Uh, this uh, makes our hardware especially interesting because uh, there is a high level of maturity on our projects because we have faced uh, the most different scenarios and environments uh, because of this diverse market uh, we supply. Uh, we are in industrial automation, in digital signage, in medical devices, and in medical devices, and a special feature for us is our life cycle, which is always more than 10 years, and we are on laboratory, uh, avionics, point of sales, automotive, and even military applications. Uh, today, we will especially focus on the, our Colibri computer on models family. Colibri, it's a SOD uh, 200 pins form factor, uh, and we have uh, mainly three different processor families on this uh, computer on model family. We have the Freescale Vibrid processors, IMX6 processors and also NVIDIA Tegra 2 and 3. Uh, more than show you on a slide, I want to highlight uh, here, and you can see my screen now, uh, our uh, website, which is a valuable source of information. So, here under products, you can see both families we have, Apollis and Colibri. We will talk about Colibri today. And if I click on Colibri family, I am directly sent to a page where you have a comparison table between our various modules. Uh, today, the live demos I will show you will be held on Colibri IMX6 which uh, is uh, Freescale IMX6 dual light Cortex A9 dual core processor and also on Colibri VF50 which is a um, Freescale Vibrid with an ARM Cortex A5. Here in this table you can see all the features in the model like RAN or Flash and you also can see especially uh, some, uh, some characteristics like power dissipation and even minimum availability of the module. Another thing I want to show you, if you want to see our prices or request an order, you can go directly to our web shop and uh, check our prices in volumes and also place your order here. Uh, besides the modules, we also have some carrier boards for these modules. Uh, here I can see the carrier boards for Colibri ARM family. Uh, just want to highlight that the Colibri family, it's completely pin compatible so you can use any of our models from Colibri in any of these carrier boards. So we have two different approaches on carrier boards. The first is of the shelf carrier boards, which is Viola and Iris. You can buy volumes of this product and deploy it directly on your product. And we also have a development board called Colibri Evaluation Board. 
all these three boards, they have free schematics and Altium data to download on our developer websites, which it's another valuable source of information about Toradex. And I will let this open here because we will use it later. Okay, enough about Toradex. Uh, I want to move forward with you and starting talking about Windows Embedded Compact Images and BSPs uh, from Toradex. So, uh, you have your hardware now and now you will need an operating system. And what is Windows Embedded Compact about? Uh, the answer is uh, from Microsoft. Uh, Windows Embedded Compact, it's a customizable operating system with a small footprint developed by Microsoft for embedded devices. Note that the compact here is the keyword uh, and the main difference between uh, the Windows Embedded family. There is the Windows Embedded Standard family with various versions and there is the Windows Embedded Compact. Uh, when you put the Compact word, uh, you have a completely different system, uh, which means uh, it's the unique system you can compile for x86, ARM, and other architectures. This is special for us, as I told you before, our hardware is fully ARM powered. And also the kernel, it's completely different. You have a preemptive real-time OS, so uh, the kernel uh, works different from the standard Windows kernel. I will not go deeper on this uh, topic. I just want uh, to let you hear with the with one uh, webinar from Freescale, uh, you see actually here uh, a slide from this webinar where they show some of the real-time capabilities from Windows Embedded Compact. Uh, in this slide, you can see how OMAC uh, defines real-time and you can see that uh, Windows CE or Compact uh, fits the requirement for hard real-time uh, proposed by OMAC. Uh, there are three different versions today uh, in the market or most used of Windows Embedded Compact. Uh, the versions are Windows Embedded CE 6, Windows Embedded Compact 7 and Windows Embedded Compact 2013. Uh, the last was uh, launched to the market on 2013. Uh, I will call these versions WinCE 6, 7 and 8. Many people call Windows Embedded Compact 2013 as WinCE 8. So, three things I want to highlight. Uh, here are lifecycle, Microsoft cares about support and lifecycle, so you can see here on this, uh, you can see here on, on, on these slides uh, the different lifecycles from all the versions. Uh, and the first line you see the end of licensing. And in the second line, you see the end of support. Another main difference is the, the, compa the, is the instruction set uh, it, each version uses. Uh, Windows Embedded C6 uses ARM v4, WinC7 ARM v7, and C++ 9 runtime. And WinC7 also have support for multi-core processors, which WinC6 does not have. 
And finally, WinC8 has ARM v7 with Thumb2, which will uh, provide you smaller binaries and faster uh, processing. Uh, C++11 runtime and also multi-core support. On the development, application development side, uh, for WinC 6 and 7, you can use Visual Studio 2008 and on Windows C8 side, you will use Visual Studio 2013. Uh, I want to show you now where you can find the information on Toradex website. So if you go to the, the developer website, uh, you will see here an operating system uh, support session and you can check the information about Windows Embedded Compact. So on the left side menu, I want to show you uh, our release uh, BSP release roadmap. Here you can find uh, the issues, open issues, and the solved issues, and the roadmap for the sys operating system development. And you can find also on the left side menu the images for the operating system. So here is where you can download the images. Uh, to develop your application. So you have, uh, for instance, here the images for the Vibrid uh, processors and uh, so you have always a release image and a beta version for several different uh, versions of the Windows Embedded Compact and you also have the BSP and the workspace for Platform Builder if you want to create your own distribution of Windows Embedded Compact. Other than that, uh, once again on our uh, website and on the comparison table between the modules, you can check here I will wait a little bit so the page we will hand her to you. Yeah, you can see which versions are supported in each module, and uh, especially you can see which is the pre-installed uh, operating system. This means that the model already includes a licensing of the Windows Embedded Compact version you see here. Okay, so finally I want to show to you uh, the board we will use today. I am turning on my camera. I hope you can see it. And I have here uh, an IRIS board with a Colibri IMX6 dual light uh, model connected to a display and I am running here Windows Embedded Compact. I can go in the menu and start uh, using the system here. The version of the system I am using here is the Windows Embedded Compact 2013. Okay. Uh, if you want to develop an application for uh, Windows Embedded Compact, it's uh, pretty simple and straightforward. I want to show you quickly how to do this on Visual Studio. I have Visual Studio 2013 opened here and I will just go through a file, new project. And when I do this, uh, you can see here uh, that I have a Windows Embedded Compact option along with a Toradex CE8 SDK. 
uh, you will only get this option after installing our development tools uh, which you can get here also on the developer website here on the left side menu development tools and you have the SDKs for development and all the installation instructions. Once you do this, I can create a simple console application. Uh, let the name like this. And we are ready to go. Once you did that, you just need to click on the bug, start debugging, and your program, your application will run on the module while the debugging will run on your EDE. Uh, I will not do this uh, now because uh, we will do this on the next session on the samples. So, uh, let's move forward with that and now we will start the third topic of our webinar which are the Tordex libraries which you will use to access the hardware uh, we have like GPIO or I2C and other uh, electronic interfaces. Once again I want to refer you to our developer website and you can find here uh, the information about Toradex CE libraries. You can see the title here, Toradex CE libraries for VF and IMX6 modules. So you can download uh, the files and here you have the roadmap also. Uh, the download contains several samples and here there is a summary of our libraries. So you will have GPIO libraries to access inputs and outputs. You have I2C interface library, SPI, PWM and many others. Uh, I will start showing to you the GPIO library. So uh, in this slide here you can see uh, the main functions on the GPIO library and I want to call your attention to see that there are no more there are not many commands more than you would use on an Arduino board. Uh, you only have to declare a variable UIO type and after that you can assign a PIN number to this variable. And this PIN number, it's the exactly PIN number of your connector. So Colibri PIN 101, which you can get more info in our data sheet. Uh, after that, you will configure this pin or this variable as a GPIO and set the direction if this variable will be an output or an input. And after that, you only have two functions, get level to read an input and this function will return an IO low or an IO high value or set level where you can assign a level to an output variable. Let's show this uh, live. So let me open my sample here. And I will also start my camera again so you can see my hardware. And let's uh, quickly go through the demo. So uh, I'm including here the GPIO header and there are some comments to initialize the GPIO handler and the library. And after that, I am assigning to uh, IO1 variable, pin 101. 
and setting this like an output and variable IO2 on Colibri pin 98 uh, as a GPIO and like an input. Note that uh, pin 101 I know that it's connected to one of these LEDs here and pin 98 it's connected to one of these suites here. Uh, after that I have an infinite loop here which what this loop does is get the level of the input and if the level is low we will blink the LED otherwise we will keep the LED uh, on. So to start this application uh, the debugging is done by Ethernet I will just check if I have connection to my board and looks like I have and I will start debugging. Visual Studio compiles the application and transfers to the board. So now you can see the LED is on and if I go there and press the button the LED starts to blink. I hope the video is fluid enough to you so you can see blinking. Or what I can do here is uh, create a breakpoint on my application, on my IDEA, and when I do that, if I press the button again, I will stop at the breakpoint and I can go step by step or just uh, make it, it run. Yeah, uh, that's pretty nice uh, debugging with Visual Studio. It's very efficient too and I want to show you uh, something else special. What I will do now is turn off my board and change this model with is an ARM Cortex A9 for a Vibridge which is a Cortex A5 module. And let's start the windows again. You can see Windows booting. And after uh, the system boots, I will start the debugger client. I need to do this in order to uh, be able to debug. Uh, what I will highlight in the second demo is that I will uh, execute the same application with any no change at all on the code. Uh, and Trodex handles all the differences in the processors and in the modules. The pins, as a matter as a fact, are the same and uh, we have uh, also the same operating system. It's Windows Embedded Compact 8 on both modules, but we are talking about an ARM Cortex A5 400 megahertz against uh, dual core Cortex A9 1 gigahertz. So if I try to debug this application here again, let's check if there is connection and we are good to go and just read the debug button. Wait for a while and it's running. Same application and different modules. The interesting thing about that is that you can start developing your application uh, even if you are not decided yet about which model you will use and you have the possibility to scale up or down your uh, hardware using our pin compatible modules 
with not too much effort on the software side. Okay, uh, I will stop this application now and I want to move to our uh, second demo. Let me uh, stop my webcam for a while and let's talk about the second sample. Uh, I will uh, show you a second sample under uh, different conditions now. We will use also the Vibrate VF50 module, but now uh, with Windows uh, CE 6. Uh, and I will show the SPI interface running on a LED matrix, which you can see on my slides. Uh, on the SPI side, you have also few uh, commands on the library like init and also set configure, configurations like bit rate, bits per word, and others. And then you have uh, SPI write or SPI read commands. Uh, this LED matrix I just uh, marked down here. Uh, you will see on my application that I have a LED matrix array and each of the, the elements of this array is one row. And this is an array of bytes and every bit in the byte represents one LED. So, uh, let me open the sample and uh, turn on my camera again. So, uh, I have changed the model I have now uh, uh, the other model connected to the LED matrix and let me open the demo on my computer, SPI matrix. Note that now I'm opening the demo using Visual Studio 2008 because of Windows CE 6. Okay, the demo is here, and once again, uh, I have included the SPI header and also GPIO header, and uh, I have I init the library uh, and the handle of the library, define which interface I will use. Uh, some modules have up to four interfaces set some configurations and open the, the handle and here I write on the SPI some initialization commands and finally here I have my LED matrix. If you think a little bit about it, you will see that this is a diagonal on the LED, LED matrix. Imagine that this is row 1, row 2, row 3, and this byte represents on a binary code uh, the LED which is on. And what I'm doing in the infinite loop here, it's shifting all the LEDs to the side. So, uh, let me execute the program right now and uh, you will see the result and uh, maybe it will be clear if it's not yet. This time I will use uh, USB OTG uh, for debugger. So, you can see that Windows Mobile Device Center have already uh, appeared here. Uh, so, if I hit the debug button, uh, wait for a while, USB is, is lower than Ethernet on the bugging side. That's it. And we have our application running. Maybe this is not uh, too fluid to you because of the video. So, I will put a breakpoint here and we can go on a step-by-step step 
and if you were not able to see, I assume you can see now. And just let it go. Okay, uh, those are the two demos I wanted to share with you about uh, our libs and starting the last topic of our webinar I wanted to show you some tools that Toradex provides which can help you to debug your application and your device and also do some prototyping and do some quick tests. Uh, for this, I will once again use uh, my, my other board uh, and here I have uh, Windows Embedded Compact 8 and uh, I have downloaded the tools from our website. So once again, you have on the left side menu tools and utilities. And there are several tools here. You can set up audio, you can set up screen resolution, among others. I have downloaded uh, two of these tools here the GPIO config and the Calibri monitor and I copied these tools to an SD card which is present on which is uh, connected to my IDIS board. So if I go on my uh, Windows Explorer I can access the SD card And I can, for instance, start showing to you the Colibri Monitor tool. Colibri Monitor is something similar, let's say, to the Task Manager from uh, standard Windows. Okay, so you can see all the processes which are being executed on the OS, and you can see which is the memory consumption of each of these processes. You can click on a process and see the threads which are on this process and you can even kill or set, change the priority of these uh, threads or uh, kill one of these processes or even change the core which is executing the process. Uh, on multi-core uh, systems. Uh, this is a nice tool to help you to feel how much of the resources of your processor and memory your application is requiring. And then you can take the decision to scale up or scale down to another model. The second tool I want to show you is the GPIO Configurator. This is a tool intended for prototype which allows you to uh, play around the GPIO uh, uh, pins of your module. So what I will do here is sort my pins by uh, pin, sort my, my variables by pin and I will find here the SODIN pin 101. You might remember this is the same pin which was connected to an LED on my GPIO sample. So the pin is here and what I can do here is change this to a GPIO and uh, also change to an output and I can set the level directly on this software. 
with no need to write um, application for that. This can make you, uh, once again, uh, faster uh, and prototype faster uh, some tests or some interfaces you might uh, want to try. Yeah. Uh, you can find all these tools and as well the installation instructions here on our website and I want also show to you on our development website on the very first page our getting started session. Here you have lots of information on how to get started since from setting up your development environment, starting a new application, using GPIO, and e even more complex stuff like, um, let's say, create, implement a web server on your model using Windows Embedded Compact. Well, this was the last topic of our webinar. Uh, I would like to uh, thank you in advance for watching and we will now start checking if there are some questions and you can send your question. We will be here try to, uh, trying to reply as many questions as possible. Just like a side mark, we will publish this webinar recording on our web page in approximately one week or a, a little bit more. So uh, I will mute my mic for a while and check which are the questions we have and starting uh, replying them. Okay, so the first inter interesting question I have here is if uh, applications developed on WinC 6 will run on WinC 7 and WinC 8 or not and how this works. Okay, so applications developed in WinC 6 will run on WinC 6 and on WinC 7, but on WinC 7 they will be fixed on only one core of the processor. Applications developed in WinC 7 will only run on WinC 7 and applications developed on WinC 2013 will only run on WinC 2013. Uh, I hope I answered uh, your question here. So, uh, there is a question about development in C Sharp using .NET. Yes, uh, uh, the answer, uh, the question is, can we develop in C Sharp and use .NET framework? Yes, you can. So, I want to show you uh, on our developer website. Uh, you can see here, uh, for instance, how to create a new VC Sharp project. And here you have a step-by-step -step instruction about that. And as a matter as a fact, at least for Ring C7, you will use .NET Compact Framework version 3.5. And for Ring C 2013, you will use .NET Compact Framework version 3.9 which Microsoft claims it's much faster than the 3.5 version. And then the application just keeps like this. Okay, uh, very simple as you might be uh, used to. Uh, another uh, thing I want to point out is that uh, Visual Studio, it's not the only choice for GUI de GUI development. So, uh, there are some other GUI example applications other than uh, VB or VC Sharp. You can also use something like Silverlight, which is from Microsoft. 
and there are some demos including source code on this page and you can also use Qt which is a multi-platform uh, framework so you can see here for WinC or Linux and there are some also how to set up everything here and you can also see some Qt GUI samples over here that you can compile for your WinC operating system on Teradex models. Okay, there is a question about if we can customize the bootloader and the answer is yes. Uh, we have uh, a bootloader customization kit, uh, so you may be try to find by bootloader customization on the search box. I'm very proud of the search box of Tradex developer websites. You can find most, uh, almost everything here and uh, you can contact our support and know better how to get uh, the information about customizing uh, the bootloader on this page here, in this article. Okay, uh, there is another question here about uh, how, what's the performance of IMX6 dual related to VF50? and uh, the performance of IMX6 it's much higher. Uh, you have uh, on Colibri family the versions with single and dual core uh, you of one gigabyte and you have a powerful GPU. Uh, VF uh, Vibrid VF50, it's only a single core Cortex-A5 with 400 megahertz and there is no GPU. So on the graphics side, uh, IMX6 will be much better. I did a small uh, benchmark comparison between uh, VF50 and uh, IMX6 single core, uh, just playing around with some vectors, some arrays, uh, uh, or ordering the arrays, summing it, uh, and writing to, to memory, uh, to flash memory, and I could measure at least uh, more than five times uh, better in a single core. Uh, you can multiply this by the number of cores if you do some parallel or uh, use something like the open MP. Uh, library. Uh, like here you have the open uh, mulch processing library. Uh, there are some information about this library here. Uh, but the interesting thing about this question is that the models are pin compatible. So uh, if you recognize that your application is missing resource you can uh, upgrade to a more powerful model or if you are able to uh, optimize your application you can uh, scale down to uh, more uh, a cheaper and also less powerful model uh, and this is very nice uh, when you have uh, pin compatible models uh, there is a question asking about some numbers on boot time of IMX6 boards and what I can tell you is that uh, IMX6 BSP it's in fully development right now but we do have uh, a fast boot demo on another model uh, which is the Colibri T30, T T20, sorry, and uh, here you can even download the 
you can even download uh, the image of this fast boot and let me try to find fast boot Toradex Colibri on Google the video and here you have a video uh, I will send it to everybody so you can see later probably you will experience some delay you will experience some delay on the video so I will send you the link and we basically boot uh, this model in uh, less than one second actually the latest version we can boot on uh, only 500 milliseconds what I can also do to show to you the, the boot time I can boot again so I will boot uh, let me uh, change to IMX6 and let's do a roughly calculation and I will boot now and one two three four five six seven seven seconds uh, this is still a beta image uh, we are publishing on our website uh, a new image uh, this week which is the first release image for the Colibri IMX6 so uh, I didn't try it, this image yet but I think the performance will be slightly better already there is a question uh, if the modules are suited for industrial use yes uh, absolutely uh, this is our uh, main goal with Thorodex so uh, some proofs of this you can see here on our website like we have industrial temperature uh, support we have the minimum availability and we also have on our website even uh, some shock and vibration tests and we have uh, several cases actually uh, most of our customers are in the industrial area so yes they are uh, they are a very good fit for industrial uh, area there is a question about support uh, the support it's not linked to the volume you purchase uh, we uh, show on our website our support model and uh, we have self-service support which you already saw with the developer website you have email support and you can always call to one of our engineers on the various Toradex offices uh, around the world uh, our model of support is free because uh, we don't want you to purchase one board from us and have lots of difficulties to develop uh, applications we want to partner up with you and help you to develop faster and put your product in the market so this is a win-win situation where you will win by being more efficient on development and both of us will take the benefit of sales in volumes uh, faster there is another question about the resolution supported on HDMI side uh, once again we can see this information on our uh, comparison table and here you have a special area on multimedia where you can find which are the encoders and decoders and the graphic controllers of each model and you can even uh, check the HDMI, VGA and RGB resolution for every module so on Colibri IMX6 we can have uh, full HD 
uh, 1080p resolution on HDMI and also on the RGB and on Colibri Vibrate you only have uh, 1024 by 768 uh, up to 24 bits. Okay, there is a question about the difference between Colibri IMX6 and the Palis IMX6. Uh, the difference between the families uh, are, uh, starts in the form factor. So, a Palis form factor is an MXM3 uh, uh, connector, uh, which makes the model slightly bigger. And on the IMX6 side, we have the quad-core version and the dual-core version on a Palis family, while Colibri family, you will find uh, the IMX6 dual-light version and single version. Uh, also, what a Palis provides to you, which is not present on the Colibri family, it's the uh, gigabit Ethernet interface and also PCI Express interface, uh, those uh, and also SATA interface. Those three interfaces uh, do not exist on Colibri family. I have a question here. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, they are asking if I can uh, run applications developed on WinC 6, 7 and, 2000, uh, and 2013 in each other. Uh, so basically uh, applications uh, developed in WinC 6 will only run on WinC 6 and 7 and this will be uh, on WinC 7 applications which were developed in C6 will be fixed on uh, one unique core. Applications developed on Windows C8 will run, only run on C8 and also C8 will not run applications developed on C7 or C6. Yeah, uh, we have also a question about Apalis family. Uh, yes, uh, we also have uh, WinCE for our Apalis family. Uh, for those who want to know better about Apalis, I'm putting here on the screen Apalis. And uh, we basically have uh, the higher power, higher power models like IMX6, dual or quad core and also NVIDIA Tegra 3. Um, uh, we also have the BSPs for the Apalis family. You can also find this information on our um, developer website. I have also here a question about how can I develop uh, GUI interfaces. So, uh, what I want to show you is once again our developer website and on the getting started section uh, you also have some uh, GIL example applications like how to use VC Sharp and even GPIO on VC Sharp, uh, how to use, how to create Silverlight applications and how to use Qt, it, which is a, a different framework. We have compiled uh, some uh, libs from Qt on our model and you can also learn how to set up Qt uh, to develop applications for Windows CE or even uh, how you can develop applications like this running on Windows CE. Yeah, uh, there are still some questions about Apalis uh, and if you go to, to software resources here, uh, uh, I will show you where 
you can find the information about a palace. So uh, when you go here to images, you can also find the downloads for the Apalis the 30 models. It's the same image actually because it's the same processor and we handle on the uh, BSP the differences in the hardware uh, surrounding the processor. Uh, and on the IMX6, uh, you have an article about uh, what IMX6 on Windows C, where you can find the information. We are actually this week uh, publish, publishing a new IMX6 release image with lots of new stuff working. And for now, you can access this article and it will work for both Apalis and IMX6 and also Colibri IMX6 family. Yeah, there is another question about code sys on our models. And uh, you also have an article about code sys. Code sys is a soft PLC solution. And uh, we actually uh, tested CodeSys running on Tegra 2. And uh, you have to contact CodeSys directly to get the information about porting and licensing and everything related about this. I will write you uh, an email after with uh, some more detailed information. Yeah, uh, some are asking also if we could provide the GPIO and SPI codes from this webinar. Uh, actually, when you download our libraries, uh, let me show on my computer here. You can see my uh, unzipped libraries uh, which I directly downloaded from Prodex uh, website and inside this file you will find libdemos and these libdemos will have several like the GPIO demo, I2C, Interrupt, PWM, SPI and many other demos. Uh, I can share this, uh, actually we will share the webinar recording uh, over the next week, so you can watch or refer this webinar for your friends. Yeah, uh, there is a question about uh, licensing. Uh, what we offer, uh, the licenses we offer on our models uh, are here. And you can see the pre-installed licensee. Maybe you can see here the pre-installed licensee is the license you can use on our models. Uh, we support other licenses and uh, to use these other licenses you will have to check with Microsoft and uh, and you can uh, find some more information uh, here on our website. Uh, our search box on the website, it's very nice. And you find which are licenses you can use in each of our models. Okay, uh, I want to thank you once again for watching. Uh, we will not uh, reply uh, any, we will not reply more questions uh, on live, uh, but if you have any other question, we will uh, continue responding by uh, the chat. And um, uh, I hope you have enjoyed the webinar. You will be able to watch the recording uh, in one week. 
and uh, thank you for watching and I invite you to call our offices and know how uh, is to work with Toradex. Uh, see you.